Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of my LEGO Train Container Terminal. It has been a while, that's because I needed to wait for a few bricklink orders to arrive and I needed to sort out some stuff. Next to that I also did a collaboration with uh, Banana Burman. Uh, that video will be online in a few weeks. Um, so I was busy, but I'm back. Let's see what has changed to restart with the tracks here. The previous version that you've seen in the previous episode had uh, elevated tracks and I did that because of the fixed height of the monorail track slopes which are 10 bricks high. Uh, 10 bricks wasn't enough to pass a train beneath so you need two slopes which makes it 20 bricks high which is ridiculously high. So that's why I just added a few bricks underneath the monorail and the railroad track to gain some height up to 14 bricks so a train can pass underneath the monorail but a viewer Jan Jaap van Dijk again a Dutchman the Dutchmen are really paying attention that, that's a good that's a very good thing um, he pointed out that 4D bricks has also slope extensions which make your monorail slope 15 bricks high that's exactly what I need, so that's what I'm gonna order, or that's actually what I already ordered at uh, 4D Bricks. I uh, placed a huge order, I made a nice deal with them. Uh, more about that when I uh, have received all the stuff from them. Um, but for now, um, it means that I can lower the tracks again, so that's what I did. So that's why the tracks are lowered, and it means also that lower track means lower crane. Alright, the other thing about the track is that I wanted to show you. I just don't like laying the track down and that's it. So I uh, made some fancy edges on it with some slopes. And um, I have two versions actually. I have the version with the yellow slope tiles. And I got the version without. So my question to you is which do you like more? The yellow version is a bit like... Um, warning tiles like uh, moving parts something like that so which one do you like more the yellow ones or without the yellow ones and um, it's coincidence that this edge has the same color as the wagon and uh, there will be multiple container trains running around and they will have other colors so um, don't just look at that all right what else uh, what else uh, we got the uh, the crane which is uh, a bit higher I've added a segment so the container can actually now pass on top of another container and go down again so that works very nicely I'll show you in a minute and what else I also made the top unit a bit smaller a bit more compact I installed the pressure reduce on top of it unfortunately these bricks here aren't in yellow so I needed to use red for those and um, I really like how it looks now. It's a bit thinner, it's slimmer. Um, I love it, how it looks like this. All right, what's more, we got also a green wire here that runs from the motor control center to the compressor, or actually the other way around. It's a, a signal from the compressor that the pressure is stable and high enough for the unit to function. So when this thing is booting, it waits until the signal from the compressor is okay. It sends a, it's just a digital line, so it becomes high when the pressure is okay. And uh, I also installed a little green LED in here. A bit of a quick and dirty fix, but uh, it works just fine. All right, so now the system waits until the pressure is, uh, is okay, and then it'll start doing its thing. Now, when you start a system like this, you don't know if it's in the right position or not. So when you start it, you have no idea where it is. So you need to initialize it, you need to reset it somehow. So that's what I did. And the crane now moves all the way to the left until it reaches the end here. The motor is then stalled. And when the motor is stalled, the system will detect that and will stop uh, rotating the motor. And the same thing goes with the yellow top unit it will go all the way over there and then the motor still is stalled and within a few milliseconds the motor is shut down and then you know it's initial position so that's just a thing that you need to do before you start the system okay another thing that i forgot to mention is that previously i had just one motor here 
but the crane became a bit wider and it became a bit heavier so I had to install a second motor over here but the reason why I had one motor was because I had some trouble running two motors with rotary encoders at the same time well I solved that problem and now I can use two motors but the thing is becoming too big and that's what uh, I'd like to show you now is um, it's going to move this container over here to this place over here and back and you'll see that uh, well 50% of the times it goes just fine and the other 50% uh, there's an, uh, a lot of friction going on and it has I don't know it just has difficulty going around because it's you know this distance that you see here is quite high then this is also quite high quite long so that gives a bit of a, a friction problems well let's see what it does first and then then we'll talk uh, further so i'm gonna enable the compressor and then uh, we'll see what it uh, will do so let me first uh, show you the uh, compressor and its fancy new green light when it reaches the 35 psi Et voilà. So it's initializing now, going to the 0.0, .0 location, and from there it'll start the uh, actual program. Now. I can make it a bit faster, but that's uh, for next episode. And now it moves it back again, above the other container, it goes very well. Ah yeah, let me just turn the compressor off. Well, as you've seen, as you've seen this time it works just fine. Um, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. So, I don't know yet, I'm, I'm a bit in doubt if I need to... Uh, if I need to keep going on this system or go with a uh, with a fixed frame on the height of the crane and then just move the upper part you know so we got um, what you also can do is you can build four pillars on which you make a rectangle frame like that and then you get, just have to move this pi this upper piece here and it will be a lot lighter and a bit more stable but the way it is running now, it's, uh, it goes pretty well actually. So maybe I'm gonna do some more testing with this uh, model. And uh, because I like this model the best. It's, um, you, you know, you see the whole crane moving and, and that's better than when you have just four fixed pillars. And that, uh, is all, that are also in the way of seeing the whole thing moving. So um, if I can make this system work and make it reliable, then uh, it has... Uh, definitely uh, my vote for this design all right that's it for now um, next episode next episode what we're gonna do in next episode I think uh, we need to uh, make it a bit more reliable next to that I'm gonna need to make it a bit faster now it's pretty slow you see every movement is one of its own and for example I can make the both motors of the crane run at the same time so you can move the whole red frame of the crane and you can also in the same time move the yellow part that's something I need to uh, figure out how to do but uh, that won't be uh, such a deal and then if I can make it all reliable then we can have a look at um, at actually detecting the uh, the containers um, so if there's a container on a uh, wagon or not um, that's something that I need to uh, still need to figure out how to do. There are actually two ways to do it. Um, you can use sensors, like the, the train is stopped in the position like you see now, and you can put a, a sensor next to every wagon to detect if there's a container on it or not. And by doing so, you, you know uh, which wagons you need to unload and which you can load and so on. You can do the same thing with uh, the monorail system. 
but then you need uh, a lot of sensors. Another way to do it is to keep uh, some kind of database in your microcontroller, um, which has the information which train has on which positions a container. So that's also a possibility, but that is um, a bit tricky since then we need to use the RFID to see if um, to detect a train and to identify the train. So that's also uh, pretty, pretty sophisticated to build it all in. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all feasible, but I try to make it um, as reliable as possible. So, um, well, on one side software is reliable and the other side hardware is, a, is a reliable. So I don't know yet what to do with it. So if you have any thoughts of it, like um, do you want to see some sensors or do you want to see, uh, well, you can't actually see it, the software. <laughs> Let me know what let me know what your thoughts about it is and um, and I can see what I can do with your ideas. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of the whole installation and um, if you have any other uh, comments, let me know. Share your thoughts and um, I hope to see you next time. Bye.